Um, call this meeting of Ohio County Fiscal Court to order on this 15th day of October 2019 at 5 p.m. First thing I want to do, I want to ask Brother Jason Bratcher to come forward. He's from the Hartford Baptist Church. He's going to lead us in a prayer and a pledge to the flag. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come here before you tonight. Beautiful day you've given us, Lord, and tonight as we come to transact the business of this uh, county, Lord, I pray that all the decisions that are made tonight will be made in accordance to your will, with thought brought to you to lay at your feet for your decisions to be of the minds of those that are here in charge tonight. Lord, we just ask that there be peace in the meeting, and Lord, we ask your hand upon this county that you continue to lead us, guide us, direct us in the way that you have us to go. Be with those that are in leadership in this county, Lord. We ask you to build them up, encourage them, and give them confidence in the decisions they make. It's in your precious name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you would, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Jason. Uh, gentlemen, before you have the uh, minutes of the September the 10th meeting, uh, we need a motion to approve. Make a motion. Have a motion by Joe Barnes? Second. Second by Sam Small. Is there any discussion, corrections, or additions? Discussion, correction, or additions? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carried. Uh, before you have the bills, claims, payments, and transfers, including a light list, uh, it would be, uh, I'd love to have a motion to approve that. So. Motion by Larry Cowan. Second. Second by Larry Morphew. Is there any discussion? It's one page with one item on the back and the post. And the post. Any discussion? Bang on roll call. Barnes. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Count. Yes. Morpheus. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes. That uh, that's approved. Okay. Uh, you have the treasurer's September 2019 financial statement. Uh, we need to not just put in the minutes that we got it. Make a motion, make a motion. Motion by Sam Small. Second. Second by Joe Barnes. Any discussion? Or questions for Ann? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Um, you have the clerk's 2019. Financial report August and September reports. Move to acknowledge. M motion by uh, Larry Cam. Second. Second by Jason Bullock. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there any, uh, no discussion on that? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, Pose like sign. Motion carries. Christina, you have something else for us? Um, we also have the unmined total delinquencies for 2018 that was turned over to the clerk's office from the sheriff's office. That's in your packets up and up there. Okay, it's the next item. It just says uh, sheriff and it should say clerk. Okay. And then the next thing is the 2019 county tax rate. I think the motion we acknowledge the first 
They have a second? Second. Is that the sheriff? Second by Larry. It's, it's the clerk. Motion. The sheriff gives it to the clerk, and then the clerk brings it over here with the sheriff's body right here. But it is that next item. Thank you. So, uh. That's right. Okay. All in favor say aye. Yeah, I don't want to. We don't have anything to do with it. I don't believe we do. I like that. Technology, we got it because they said Okay. What tax rate are you talking about? Because we approved tax rates sometime a few meetings ago. Yeah, sure. Mineral. Just like the library. Okay. Okay. No. It's all the library and the conservation and everything like that, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. We put the motion by Sam Small to acknowledge. A second. Second by Joe Barnes. The last thing I added is the 2019 property tax bills that the Sheriff's Department transferred to the clerk's office. Those just have to be, they don't have to be approved, I think. I think they just have to be acknowledged as well. On favor say aye. 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 Opposed like that? Of course. Let's acknowledge. And uh, that was the tax know. rates. Okay, it wasn't on the agenda, but you got it in the mail. Uh, Sam, small. No, we didn't make a motion on the last one. We said we didn't need to. But we need to acknowledge how to do Yeah, Sam Small made a motion. Okay. And uh, I think Joe seconded it. So we got that one too. Okay. Okay, and the sheriff's quarterly report. They're still not here. Um, uh, sure, see. The uh, we're ready for the sheriff's quarterly sure, report. Yeah. Did you want to present that or just uh, we've got, we got it. it? We got it. We've got it. I'll make a motion or acknowledge uh, the sheriff's quarterly report. Motion by Jason Bullock, second by Joe Barnes. Uh, any discussion? Bang down all in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Well opposed, like sign. Motion carries. I want to. I want to say something about the sheriff real quick. I want to brag on the sheriff's office. We were at Beaverdam Elementary today, and uh, all of a sudden our fire alarm went off. And nobody knew what was going on, so we went in lockdown mode. And uh, by the time we could look up, all the sheriff. We were surrounded by sheriff cars. But I mean, they got there pretty quick. It ended up being a preschooler uh, had pulled the fire alarm. But, um, <laughs> They weren't there. Did you take the preschooler in and arrest <laughs> But they were there quick. We appreciate that. Yeah. Well, McDonald's is not that far away. Yeah, Beaver Down with Sue. Yeah. That's this. <laughs> I got to find it. They were there quick. There you go. Uh, okay. Um, we need to acknowledge the uh, um, tax rate. For the extension office, is it? what was the outcome uh, of that? Did they raise is same? Nine four two. Personal is six point two two nine. Motor vehicle slash watercraft is one point eight. Was that compared to last year? I believe it's identical. I'm pretty sure it's. So they took the compensating rate then. Yes. Normally, we've been taking the four percent on that, and I wasn't asked to a public hearing on it, so I'm assuming it was the. I thought they Company. had been taking. I think they've been just taking. Well, they've been taking two, about two years in a row. We took four percent. They had to have a meeting, I didn't think but they not did. this year. Hey. We don't have any say so over that, do we, Joe? No. Hey, bring it. Which, if they take the compensate, it still goes up a little. Is that correct? Uh, take the compensate, it could go up. Yeah, the the net will go up a little bit, but the rate could go up or down. Which is the rate? That's self conservation. We're looking at, at uh, is that what we're looking at? No, we're looking at extensions. Okay. I'm pretty sure it went up just a little bit, but I still think it was a compensating rate because we didn't have to have a public here. Mm -hmm. 
That's what it looks like. So do I have a motion to, to acknowledge that? So motion by Larry Cam. Second. Second by Sam Small. Uh, any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, like sign. Motion carries. Is there a Thomas Merritt here? No, Merritt Thomas. Merritt Thomas here? She's not here, but uh, if you want to go ahead and find it, I can mail it to her. Okay. Uh, do you have it handy? The health department wanted to go ahead and proclaim today, October 15th, as Diabetes Awareness Day. And we have a proclamation the judge is about to sign. Which one is it? Proclamation for health department. Yeah. And uh, Diabetes Awareness Day, but... I'm very much aware of it 365 days a year. A lot of people's getting in there. Okay, that's done. And uh, might make a note in the in the uh, minutes that we did that. Uh, we have an ordinance 2020-2. Sheriff's fees, the second reading. In other words, I've seen the last meeting. We had the first reading. Uh, so there have been no changes to it in that time. So I guess we've seen a, a, a motion to approve the second reading of his. Uh, so moved. Motion by Larry Morphew. Second. Second by Sam Small. Any discussion? Being none, all in favor say aye. Right. Pose like sign. Motion carries. Um, we have the second reading of the weight limit ordinance, which, like I said, we passed it two weeks ago. All the farmers that had asked for it seemed very happy with it. I got a call from Tyson Sanford today, and he said that uh, all the farmers liked it the way it was. Uh, so, so he pretty much. Uh, it was uh, the one that talked to all the farmers about it. And so what I'm asking for is a motion to do the second reading. So moved. Motion with Sam Small. Have a second. <coughs> is there a second? Yeah, I'll second. Second by Larry Morphew. I saw yeah. some questions. Second by Larry Morphew. We, we talked about extending that to the office. I know. I looked at, I looked over it, and uh, and with all the ones, like I said, I saw, sought the advice of the Farm Bureau. Uh, Tyson's here. I didn't see you, Tyson. Sorry, I wouldn't talk about you nearly as much if I knew you were here. But uh, we, we feel like it. There, all those others are very well represented by state law. Yeah, somebody else to speak. Yeah, I think. I think. Yes, sir, Joe. Whenever you give things what you're doing. It was. So we I'm got sorry. To look at it. We, we couldn't. I, I thought I didn't know because usually we go and have that meeting, you know, the public hearing, I and I wasn't invited to. Okay. Well, we acknowledge what we got anyway, but appreciate you informing us on that. Uh, go ahead and take a, a vote, roll call on this uh, ordinance. Yeah, hang on. Can we? Can I just ask a couple questions? Because I'm not. Okay. Real, I'm just not real sure. I. I mean, it's just, I just don't know. You know what I mean? I don't want to. Well, what, what what we're doing is extending the courtesy for the ones that's got a commercial license to be able to haul. Just like the farm so tax do. What I was concerned about is some of the people that you know farm that's got grain, but they got commercial license, and then they might haul for another farmer. You know, we not. I felt like we needed to extend the courtesy to all, it's, all the farmers. There's never actually been any problem with anything other than this. There's never been a challenge or a question or anything about our policies on anything else about but the uh, chicken litter. Never, never, nothing. That nobody's ever approached me with it. And matter of fact, I don't want to keep calling him out. But I know one farmer that we've asked to haul his grain a little bit different way, and he did. It wasn't a problem. 
Um, so well, here's what I'll do. I'll go ahead and vote for it. But if we have an issue of fart farmers coming in, mm -hmm. we'll address it. Then. I want to revisit it right. where we can address them too. Because I'm not. I don't want it to say this group. You're okay. And I don't want, you know, if we're going to be fair for one, let's be fair at all. Yeah, if we can have we, a challenge. Can we put that in the minutes where that if it comes up, we can revisit yeah. it? And yeah, we can do that. Uh, let's make a note in the minutes. If there's but, not an issue, that's one thing. Yeah. But if there becomes an issue, I think if you're going to be fair okay. for one, you need to be fair. Well, I agree. That's so usually when we address that. Huh? product directly related <coughs> to farm, to and from the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, so far there's not been another issue. I would rather address the other if it comes up. We can do that. Um, we can go ahead and okay. fix this for you right now, but if that becomes an issue, I, I want to address the other one too. Okay. Roll call. Farm. It's kind of like to be fair across the board, but if it's not an issue, then we can we can deal with it when it comes up. So yes. Johnson. Yes. Cam. No. Morphew. Yes. Small. Yes. Bullock. Yes, if the motion says that we'll redress that. Soon. Okay, that's done, and I, you got that, and I'll sign it right now. This is it right here, isn't it? No, that's the trash one. Judge. Yes. Did he say that that ended up four percent? Four four percent of the tax rate, not four percent total. How much would that be on the average? About a percent by looking at a dollar or so. Uh, okay. Have you got it? There it is. That's is this it? What we just did? Yeah, this is it. Uh, did you get a copy of this before? If not, you want to take a picture of it? Yeah, he's going to play a snapshot. Yeah, hand it to Tyson. Let him. Give me yours. I didn't see it. You sure? Yep. I'm just not if you did, I can sign another. Co give him another copy of it. Then. Well, you got a copy? There's one thing in there. You feel change in all those, but I can't go for it. Yeah, find that one. What? What? Okay. Uh, is that the one? And it's on here. It's on there. Just no, I don't. I don't need it. Okay. Uh, so I'll give him this one. There you go. You, we're going to give it to you. And then when you file, we got two originals, is what we got here. You just want the copy? No, we, got, we have him one. Appreciate it. You got my agenda. <laughs> Okay, boy, do we have the amendments tonight. Uh, we have a budget amendment 2020-4. So it means it's the fourth budget amendment in this one. And the first reading. Do you all have copies of it? I don't know whether I do or not. Should have, was in their packet, right? Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep. Should be in here. Y'all have a copy. They go in order, so it's right after the last one. Yeah. Done that for her. 2020 dash three, is that it? Uh, dash four. It's right after dash three. Looks like this. Right there. You're holding it. On the left side. On your thumb. Okay, so this this has to do with the garbage. That's, that's the right. It's on the left. Oh, okay. Right Over there. here. So moved. Motion will Larry can. Do I have a second? This is the first reading. And which one is this? Budget Ordinance 2020 4. And I can't go by those numbers. How many budget amendments does this make this fiscal year? Is this the first one? 
It's given us our discretionary second. Given the year. This is the second one this fiscal year. I second. Second by? Second. So, uh, yes. Sorry. Okay. Further discussion? Or questions? Did you have list of money we approved? You know? Ah, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and go no call. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphy? Yes. Small? Bullock? Yes. That, that motion passed. Charlie, you are on. Some of y'all have asked for the branch ordinance to come up. We've done it numerous times, so to speak. Uh, Justin has done added one line. I've got a brand new copy of it right in front of all. Except for you, Brent, I'll give you this one. Uh, the only thing that was changed pretty much from the last time is the one line item. And it's on a section of the definition. It shall not include any furniture on any porch deck area of any building uh, that's pretty much the only thing that was added to this uh, so I'll leave it in y'all's yeah. hands if y'all so desire or not yeah. desire to do this just so I understand this charter this just deals with household trash right. old couches chairs recliners appliances that's out in the yard and stuff that, that is correct we have a definition to read that uh, and, and garbage Section 2, definition of household trash means accumulation of household trash, compressing of garbage such as bottles, cans, clothing, food package, newspaper, home furniture, and appliances. Uh, basically, that means if you, Larry, if you got a house and you got 50 bags of garbage back there, that ain't right. Right now, as it stands, there ain't a thing in the world we could do about it as a county. Uh, we have to call the state EPA in. They might, might not come in. Okay. Who's going to enforce this? Uh, you're looking at it for this moment. Do you think you'll have to have a, an assistant or you think you can handle it? I don't know. We can add it on other jobs. I mean, you know, I my thoughts is on this and when everybody's asking about this, I ain't going to be patrolling. I get calls daily, just like all of y'all get calls daily. But here's the thing. If I go out to your house... If you're, if you ain't going the right away, man, a thing in the world I can do about it. You're already having to go out about the... She has to go out on these complaints yeah, already. the calls anyway. I just can't... I can send the guys out there to clean up the right away, but if you're off the right away and you got all the garbage, I can't tell you what to do with your garbage in your yard. But then again, if you got a nice home here and you got somebody else's garbage over here next to you, you know, that ain't right. But uh, that's kind of the way this is right now. And you ask about enforcing it, who's doing it? I can tell you, I can do the very best I can do, kind of like the badger. I can do the very best I can do, long as everything else. The problem with it is going to be you've got a neighbor that you don't like, and then, you know. I'm sure it's going to be case by case, and that's where I'm going to sit down with Justin and y'all. And Back here on the section about the fines. Excuse me. Violations and everything. You know, you got to range it from five dollars to a thousand. I mean, I mean, it's really not even worth doing one for five dollars. Right. It's just a variety, and we put that in there. Uh, yeah. That's kind of more like a warning, and then right. we're not we're not out to you know, we're not out to get anybody. It's we just want them to to stop. You got a resident next door. You don't want trash out. They value your house. They value your house. Every district here, I can take you four or five houses right now. It's got a barn full of garbage. I can take you one on 69 right now. It's probably got 50 bags at the end of the mobile home. And if it's in the barn, out of sight? Most of it, I can take you one in Cromwell right now. It's full. It's coming out the back door. Neighbors complain to me about it, but I can't do a thing. But this is it. all just about in sight, right? This is in a building. Yeah. Inside, this is your old you should about. have an, a new okay. one here can't somewhere. can't go into anybody's right. buildings or anything. No, right right there. There. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I think with household trash, it's just an invite for rats and roaches and things well, like that. That's what we've had a lot of trouble with, in it, Larry? And then yeah. the, the biggest problem is, is we've had some where it's been piled up a lot, and then the people left that lot, whether they had a mobile home or whatever, and they took it away, but they left the garbage, the bags, 
decayed in the sunlight, and then it, it blew it. Joe's got a different uh, area down there that I went to and tried to help them out and got out saying, and I thought it was two cats. So I got a little bit closer to realize they was rats. Yeah. So I mean, it's one of the biggest ones I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, then dogs will get into it too. So, but it wasn't in the air too. So this is, well, nine times out of ten, when I call you, Charlie, that this is the call, the complaints I get too. Yeah. It's, I mean, I get calls. Weekly or not? Yeah, it's. I know y'all do too. It's a lot of, no. yeah, a lot of problem with it. And, and we have hashed over it a lot of times. Now, you know, if we had issues about rubbish and junk and right. what people's junk, you know, you can have old farm equipment. Some people put it's junk. Some people put. It's no, that's junk. pretty. But we got, we worked all that out. This is just about trash. Old farm equipment. Just for the public's mm -hmm. notification, and well, I'm gonna read the whole paragraph. It says household trash means accumulation of household trash comprising of garbage such as bottles, cans, clothing, food packaging, newspapers, home furniture, and appliances that originates from private homes or apartments. The aforementioned shall also include household, domestic, or residential waste. This shall not include any furniture on any porch or deck area of any building. That's the entire definition of what we're, what we're proposing. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to that effect. Have a motion by Larry Camp. Second. Second by Sam Small. Any further discussion? Being none, roll call. Barnes? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Cam? Yes. Morphy? Yes. Small? Yes. Bullock? Yes. That we motion to, carries. We have to say, Charlie, we've been working on this for ever since I've been in a, a year or two, a so. Time. And but I'll uh, Justin Mayer about getting all the other stuff. Yeah. Thank you for your And br give us an update how everything's working maybe next time. Yeah, well, this, this will have to be a second reading too, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going a little bit out of order because we kind of made a uh, a little mistake on the agenda. I'll take blame for it. Um, but anyway, right now, uh, show me that request from the museum. Just the museum sheet. I know. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you know, we have a museum over here behind the library annex. And uh, a historical society operates that one. And it well, is that they operate the... Uh, uh, Veterans Museum for us, and it's a wonderful thing we have it in in the county. But uh, we we have a uh, a problem now that that corner of the main uh, museum house has sunk in. It's went down. The floor has got to come out. The new foundation beefed up. New pillars and everything put under. Brought back up to level. Then put everything back. And uh, and, uh, and some of the things in there are so historical, they're totally irreplaceable. So we got a, a charge of uh, packing, moving, and storage and returning. We've got that. And uh, it's going to cost $10,000 to fix it. And it's going to cost another five to get these one-of-a-kind, irreplaceable artifacts uh, kind of uh, packaged in a way they won't be damaged to take them away then bring them back when the repairs done uh, I think it's a, a reasonable uh, thing uh, we did do a lot of shopping around these were the best prices we could get some of them was as much as where this uh, $10,000 bill is on the repair was 24000 so so we did shop around can get it done for 10 and uh, the moving and returning for 5 we can do the entire project for 15000 and uh, I think we should do it And uh, but you advertised for bibs? They did, and they have them here. They have two. And what does the work? Tell me the work. Is this the okay, work? the corner of the building had sunk into the ground. Basically, the seals broke away, and it went down from the from a about a two foot high 
pillar to the ground. And of course, the the, the beam or the, uh, the support and all that is broken. And the uh, only way you can get to it fixed is take the floor out of that one room. The floor has come out. Then you get under there and you, you re-level and jack up, put new wood under there and, and a new um, pillar, new pillar under it, and put it on. Okay, there's the one, and here's the. What did I do with the other one? The tree still standing there. Still. The, okay, there's some of them. I've, I'm missing the one I was just staring at. Where's that twenty-four thousand dollar one? Okay, it's in their package. Justin, is that the city of Hartford? They send the Hartford Museum. Yeah, I know they said the Hartford Museum. It's the Ohio County Museum. It's in Hartford. It's Ohio County Historical Society. With the train right next to it. Yeah, with the caboose. Over there where the caboose is. The property is probably in our name. Behind the house. Probably. But it's uh, it's property of Ohio County? Yes. Well, how, what's your plan of paying, David? What's your thought on that? I thought that amount of money to, to do so much good for the community, we could either do two things. We could either pay it from reserves, which would be my favorite, or that several of us might could get a uh, chip in after a discretionary man pay it. One of those two methods. Well, I'm in favor of taking it out of reserves for now, and then we'll see where we're okay. at later. Okay. Motion by Larry Cam. David, this, these bids, there's one that's $5,000 pack, move, and store. Yeah, that's it. That's the one I named. And then the other one's 2000 to pack and move, store, and then 2000 to unpack and move. This one is $5,000 higher, and it doesn't say they're going to bring it back or unpack it. Well, we, um, I thought that figure represented the two added together to give the five the storage and the return. If we, if we vote for that, we need to make that in the form of the most that they unpack or two and make that. Yeah. The pack and unpack of it. By the way, we're discussing it, so I'm going to go ahead and make the second. Motion by Larry Count, second by Dave Johnson. And let that motion reflect this, this uh, is reflect the packing and unpacking. Yeah, and that would reflect that the pack the that this is paid for packing and unpacking the uh, artifacts. Uh, Larry Cam made the motion. I second. Mm -hmm. Where's this map set, totally Larry? Oh, yeah, 2005. It's in the... Uh, we've already done that. Is that in depth? Okay. Where's the one that's 10,000 to be returned? Right here. Right. 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 Does the guy have insurance to do it? Is he insured? Does he have insurance to cover if he messes up? What we've been doing at times here recently is we've just been entering into an agreement with them, uh, with whatever company's doing any type of construction. Uh, we have indemnity, we have insurance, all that will be in there. And so if you want it subject to the execution of that, I would strongly recommend that. that yeah. be protected. Yeah, well, we need to make sure that we need to make sure that's contract. Well, you can add that into the motion. Because right. if they break something, then it's... Because they need it also. Okay, to add that in your motion. Yes. Okay. And we added that in the motion, I, and I okay with the second. Okay, go ahead and roll call it. Have we got 
We're getting a reserve to Yes. Johnston? Yes. Town? Yes. Morphew? Yes. Small? Yes. 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 Yes.
Okay. Um, we just changed this one. When are you going to start selling the seats? You already sold them. Sell you already selling seats now? Selling. Okay. And you can tell me or call the office at the theater. What's the price that you're running the seats at? 30 each. 30 each. Or no, I mean, I'm talking about the ones that they're taking out. Oh, she, he's wanting to know about the ones we're taking out. Well, they are you're going to start. You're going to sell some of those seats yes, to try to help raise money rows, too, right? Yeah, the rows of nine are twelve hundred dollars. The rows of six are seven fifty, and individual seats are one fifty. But the individual seats will not have the impacts. Okay. Complete rules. They're just coming back to present them. Okay, we'll have you back. Appreciate you coming. Um, Jody, you want to come tell us about the OCDA website? So you all had asked, can you hear me this time? You all had asked for me to come back and, and give you some more information about why we need a website and what that cost looks like. So uh, you have in front of you a printout of some of the, the details of what an economic mm -hmm. development website needs to have. Um, in order to be functional, um, especially in the recruiting mm -hmm. and industry. So if you haven't had a chance to look over that, the top is just the basic um, attractions for an economic development website, and then the good characteristics of an economic development website. And then it just goes through some of the key features and things like that, but um, my short overview of this is that our website doesn't do any of these things currently. So we fail in all categories of this. So the cost, and I meant to bring that with me, but I didn't. Basically, the, the initial cost of the website is around $19,000. Um, that does include all of the statistics and a, a target industry study. It includes a job board. It can be done in three months, the initial one, and then they will maintain it for us for $4,800 a year. Um, and that would include any target industries that we wanted in the future. They would update it every three years. That includes the update, so at no additional cost, they'll update the website every three years. That's just one. Um, what I'm speaking about is, is one quote, but that, that is a company that is that was recommended from the Economic Development Cabinet and they only do economic development websites. The last page on there lists some websites that they have done specifically that we looked at. Um, so if you wanted to compare our website and look at that, you can. And I do have some marketing money as we discussed before. But just an overview of some of the things that we're gonna to need to do with that money. Uh, we need a strategic plan for Ohio County for economic development that is not uh, a mirror of the regional strategic plan. Pulls together tourism, the fiscal court, the city government, um, everyone who's really involved with economic development in the county so that we're all on the same page, heading in the same direction. That's going to cost us a little bit of money to gather statistics um, so that we know what we should be shooting for and which direction we should be going in. The target industry study, if we did the website, that would be covered, so we wouldn't have to pay an additional cost for that. But um, we do need to quantify our workforce. Whenever I was in Dallas recently, um, I was kind of trying to figure out how we can situate ourselves to market and compete in a world where the Owensboro's and the Bowling Greens get the, the major projects. Um, but we know we have a workforce here to support industry. So uh, what my conclusion was is that we really have to focus on selling that workforce. In order to do that, we have to quantify it and we have to put it in a marketable form. That's going to cost a little bit of money too. And then the industrial recruitment um, after we have the target industry is going to cost us additional money. So $20,000 in our budget probably isn't going to cover all of those things. So whatever the fiscal court wants to contribute to that, if you do want to contribute to that, you know, we'll work with whatever we have in the end.
Well, uh, I would uh, listen to the uh, court member that's on the OCDA board. Would tell his pleasure. Well, I mean, I think we definitely need to do something with our website. Uh, I'm sure we won't act on this tonight, but uh, we need to uh, look over it and and have some time to mull it over. Uh, we definitely like it in our website. Uh, I went over a few of these the other day, and uh, they're pretty extravagant websites. Yeah. Uh, and it's user friendly and it's easy. So if you entered in with that agreement on the 19th, Sam, would that be, would you have to do the year? Yes. Yeah, that's the agreement, the way I understand. Yeah, so, uh, and the, I mean, you don't, you wouldn't have to, but then you would have to, I mean, then you'd have to pay another $19,000 in five or six years whenever your website is outdated. I mean, it, you know, the technology moves so fast. If we don't do it and then maintain it, then we would kind of be shooting ourselves in the foot. The yearly price is like, I would buy the computer today and two weeks from now, you're outdated. Yeah. These so are the ones you said that they've done? That's some of them that they've done. Yeah. I do agree with you, Jody, that uh, the workforce will be really uh, appealing to the industry. Yes. And, and I think that's probably, we don't have the money for subsidies and tax breaks and all that here in the county, but I think the workforce may offset that yeah. if we have a good workforce here available here in Ohio County. And, that was good and, I, ha and I have the, the numbers to prove it. But I have to be able to put it in a in a marketable format. I understand. Because the only way that we're selling that right now is whenever I sit down in front of those site selectors and actually yeah. tell them face to face. So uh, we have to have other means for people to access that information that's appealing, that you know, that gets to the point, um, and that's accessible to them, and that they can find, and that will that will get to them. And this is kind of the only way to do that yeah. is to to go about it. Like this. Yeah, and the numbers are so important. I can give you an example. I, I know that we have uh, in a 35 mile radius around bluegrass crossings as of the end of July, we have 7,000 people currently drawing unemployment in a 35 mile radius around wow. our industrial park. That That's numbers that raise eyebrows whenever you go to places like Dallas or Toronto and you sit in front of site selectors. Nothing else does. I mean, whenever, they're, whenever I'm surrounded by people from the cities, you know, in Kentucky, um, where they have a, a large population and, and the colleges everywhere surrounding them. That's kind of the only thing that we have that we can really attract industry with, and it's a good point. So mm -hmm. we have to drive it home. I agree. Yeah. And we check with the businesses in the county, like maybe who's in there. I know that this is the, you know, the ones that specialize in just for government, but, you know, maybe we could talk to some of the people that put together websites for like the hospital or the Purdue and everything, see if, we if, have. if they offer a... Yes, but the thing is, this is this is economic development specific, so it's it's geared to attract site selectors. So it's a different, it's a whole different ballgame than a business website, but the prices are comparable. And and those folks are represented on the OCDA board, all those types yes. of it, the health care and yeah. education mm -hmm. and Websites are not cheap. <laughs> they're not cheap to, to get and they're not cheap to maintain. But um, if you do it right, then it's worth the money because you'll get the return. Yeah. And what? that's what, what I've seen with other economic development organizations. The ones who are really successful do this. I mean, they, they just put their money in marketing. That's what they do. Joe, do you give some examples here? I'd like to, uh, and I'm going to vote on it tonight, I don't suppose, but I'd like to see some examples of the websites that they put together. Yes. Just for my own personal yes. approval or whatever. The and ones that, that is the um, that is the links that are at the end, but I can mm -hmm. use for each Wouldn't you do that for the twelfth of uh, November meeting? Get that together. I could, but I'm not sure I'm going to be here for that meeting because I am going to be at a TBA uh, leadership economic development conference in Nashville that day, and I don't know what time I'll be. Well, there. maybe do it the next. If you're, you can let me know. 
If not, then it'll be the we next have special one. Any? They all have the same layout. Could Things they? are just put in different directions. It has different can I pick? Can I pick their website up on a computer and see what this particular? Yeah, I mean, like this is Tahoma County. Yeah. One of the biggest problems with our website, the way that it was built in the system that we yes, you can. built it, yeah. is not, okay. um, well, it's not very compatible with Google, and Google's the largest search engine on the planet. So, I mean, it needs to be... That's exactly. The, right. the, the schools, like, everything's going yeah, that way. You can't... Um, it, it doesn't transfer easily to other devices. I mean, it was great when there, to, just to have something, a landing page, so that we weren't totally in the dark. But I doubt any site selector has ever been to our website, ever. Uh, but the next time you can, we'll get this information if they want it. And at the same time, we'll be okay. talking about funds. We'll probably be talking with Ann about it. Get the information to us before next meeting, and we'll look at it. And that was the whole purpose of the prior of occupational taxes, economic. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You can't. Yeah, I mean, I would love to be here for that. No, you, you can't be here. Get the information. Yeah, but that way we don't have to. Have the information. Yeah. Yeah, you'll try to email it to us or something, and that so, kind of gets mold around. Yeah. Sure. When you brought this up last time, you know, we kind of mentioned that TVA money was how much would you try? I have $20,000 for marketing, and that's why I was talking about these other things that we need to do. So uh, that's why I even asked if the court would be willing to, to support that, because there's uh, many things that we need to do in line with this, and $20,000 for marketing is not really going to do it all yeah so you know whatever we can do then I mean we'll make use of it however we need to do it but it would be great if we can do all of these things this year might be a scenario where we can meet you halfway or something but we'll see we'll see Jody sure we yeah we're sure we're open to it. for the yearly maintenance costs because you know once they get the template you know, they're not going to change a whole lot. No, but they are because they're going to keep up. We, we um, keep up with all the commercial properties, and they're going to do all of that for us. So they'll maintain it constantly. It'll be a constant maintenance. We don't have to do any of the upkeep at all. So it, it, it'll be a busy work for them. $4,800 is kind of a bargain, really, for what they're going to be doing. Um, and the statistics will always, always be available. They're always going to adjust to whatever our target is. Um, if we have a campaign going on, like the Opportunity Zone, for instance, if we have an Opportunity Zone project that we want them to focus on, they'll change it instantly. All we have to do is pick up the phone. Right now, <clears throat> if I want to list a property on our website, it takes me three or four hours to list a building, um, even if I have all the information, because I'm literally coding. I'm going in and Right. If you guys have ever seen computer coding, you know what I'm talking about. That's what I'm doing whenever I do that. And I'm not a computer. Are they updating? I'm not a database coder. Constantly updating anything you send them, whatever. Oh, they constantly update, not just once a year. They're continuously, updating. yes. It is, an, it is a website consultant. They're not just updating it. They're 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 and uh, make the stick around though uh, when we go to personnel we may call on you in the meeting um, and speaking of that right now I need a uh, short closed session and I'll ask Justin to join us and uh, Renetta, Keith and Kenny stay ab ab around in case we need you so move motion for Larry Cow thank you Joe Barnes Tired to you. <coughs>
as a mechanics assistant. I put up the name Aroma Ferguson. I'm on a roll call vote.
it's uh, according to I, I was ready to go with it, but according to them, they, it's a uh, even though she came from program worker to do the same job there, which means that she will be the ones hired. That we we have to go through the advertising process, so we can do it at the very next meeting. So anyway, I'm done with this. And uh, Renetta, would you run that ad? I mean, there'll be no job. I hate to do that when that means there's not really a job out there, but you're advertising for it anyway. send out for y'all's uh, information there you got those sheets we did a record amount of black topping this year maybe maybe double what we've ever done before and it's just been a very very good year and we'll continue to do that uh, so uh, that's where we are uh, on that just look it over and I will be doing a press release both the radio station and newspaper here this week showing all of those uh, and if uh, if the press is here, we'd like to have a copy of those roads. We'd be glad to give it to them. So that's a big announcement we have. Uh, then I'm going to appoint a committee. Then I'm going to have uh, uh, Justin to read in something into the minutes. Uh, I want to point. Okay, moving back up. I hope most of you know this, but we had a bad accident in a dispatch. The, uh, we had a water pipe leak between the floor and the subfloor, and it just basically tore, totally ruined that area. So we've got to figure out what to do about it. So I'm on the point, I'm pointing the committee of staff, most of the staff, to look into this and to see uh, what, uh, uh, what can be done about it. I'm point Josh Wright, Sheriff Tracy Beatty, Clerk, Bess Ralph, TBA, Jason Chen, Treasurer Ann Melton, and Fire Chief of Beaver Dam, David Stevens. So that's our committee. And uh, of course, a lot of us have already done. Sheriff and Josh and Ann, all of us have already done a lot, but we're going to go ahead and have the make a big decision, you know, as soon as we can. Uh, but the, the, this, this is a committee will meet and come up with a plan to come back to the court room. Hopefully by the next time. Did it do good with that? Yes. Did it leak for very long? Or probably. They had a musty smell and water appearing for months and months and months before it was actually it got bad enough to actually find it. We had peaches to find it, peaches pipe locators, and, and they repaired it. But uh, <coughs> we still got all that damage to contend with. And it's not acceptable to leave them in the same space under the conditions it's in. So we're going to have to do better. So this committee will work into that. Um, okay. Uh, Justin, tell us about the corrections board. Uh, yes. Uh, with the assistance of uh, Jody Ashby, uh, who I would concur has done an excellent job. And, uh, I think it's just going to be procedural in nature having to advertise because we know uh, who has done really well um, in taking over for Chase, who also did a very good job. Uh, Jody and I were discussing some some economic possible economic development issues with regard to those that have been incarcerated or have been dealing with felonies uh, on the record, and uh, we found that there. We have the, uh, uh, the ability to start the Ohio County Community Corrections Board. There is a statute that permits uh, this the establishment of this. Um, and I'm going to ask the court to uh, recognize the establishment of it. Um, but the purpose behind it, one of the main purposes, was in order to get certain corrections grants, you had to establish this board. Um, and so some of those corrections grants have included in other counties um, the state or federal government providing ankle monitors. 
uh, as a county attorney and the prosecution side of various criminal offenses. I am dealing with uh, the state seemingly finding ways to uh, save themselves some cost by getting certain individuals that may have committed criminal offenses out of jail as quick as possible. Um, I would imagine that a great deal of Ohio County and their families have had to deal with someone that has been uh, addicted to some type of substance. It is always difficult. Um, it's difficult for a parent to keep their child. It's difficult to deal with the situation. Um, sometimes them remaining in jail can be the best thing for them. But unfortunately, our court is bound by the terms of looking at a level as to their repeat offending and whether they'll show up to court and determine whether they need to be out. Um, not what used to happen, which is the judge taking uh, a look at the situation and having more discretion and keeping one in. Um, and this Community Corrections Board, we have a lot of uh, purpose. And some of that is finding alternative sentencing to incarceration, uh, be that home incarceration, um, those that are the victims of uh, domestic violence or assaults uh, are concerned when, when individuals are let out and, and fear. Um, uh, uh, certainly that they may be subject to additional acts of, of violence with respect to that person. Um, this will, talk, will possibly allow us to get um, tracking devices that the individual would have to wear that would inform the victim as to the location of the individual and whether he has, he or she has come within uh, contact or close proximity to their location. These grants also provide the opportunity for us in, in uh, monitoring uh, individuals in other ways if we're going to have to deal with them not uh, being in jail. And if, if, if one has committed a criminal offense, we all believe that there should be some punishment to that offense. Um, but if there are alternatives that, would, that are going to save the state money on weekend, but, but, but also uh, keep us safe, uh, we want to do that. And, and it is a drain on the county budget and county inmates also. So that's one aspect of it. Another aspect of the Community Corrections Board is, um, you know, I have the opportunity more in a rule setting as county attorney in talking to those that are dealing with criminal offenses in which they're um, having some drug-related offense. And, and, and when I talk to them, oftentimes they say, Justin, look, when I got out, the only person that I knew to call, I have no family, I have no friends, the only friends that I have are the same friends that put me in the same position to reoffend. Otherwise, I, I don't have a home to go to. And so with the help of the members of the board, which you'll hear in just a minute because I would like them recognized, we're going to hopefully, by example, in our first meeting, we're going to hopefully be able to hand, hand the, the, uh, an inmate that is leaving incarceration <coughs> and saying, here's places that you can go. Here's people that are willing to help. If you need food or something of that nature, we can possibly assist. Uh, we can also possibly assist in you getting some type of treatment, long term, short term, what have you. And these programs have been set up in different states that have saw that have that have, have seen uh, the reoffending decrease dramatically because they're not having to go to the same place. And a lot of times, families don't know where to send their individuals. Uh, the individuals that are dealing with this with this type of matter um, of drug addiction. So this is designed to also give them uh, some opportunities so that we won't have to deal with them anymore. And um, I want to thank those that have agreed to uh, serve on the board. Some of them are statutory mandated. You have to have in certain individuals on the board. Uh, but the board consists of myself, the Sheriff Tracy Beatty, uh, the Commonwealth Attorney Blake Chambers, Judge Executive David Johnson, our former uh, judge, who, who in my opinion was one of the best judges to serve, uh, Judge Browning, uh, Rick Wright, our jailer, 
Amanda Howard, who's with probation and parole. Ashley Davis, who deals with mental health treatment. Uh, Jody Ro Russell, who is in social services. Um, a defense attorney, Travis Johnson. Um, uh, Jody Ashby, certainly from Wasita. Uh, Brian Wilson, uh, uh, who works with Chamber of Commerce. So if we can get these individuals and help them and possibly expunge old felonies where now companies have a larger labor pool in which to hire individuals, that is our hope also. Ashley Davis, also a victim's advocate, um, and uh, mental health. Michelle Hinch from Adult, Adult Education Services. Matt Bartlett, uh, Paul Decker, who is dealing with the assistant principal who, who deals with the, the juvenile individuals that are, uh, are offenders. Uh, Terry Torrance, um, and, and a lot of you probably know Terry. Uh, he helps with the community and, and drug rehabilitation and has, has been successful with a number of individuals. Joe Hitchell also does a lot of our treatment. I want to thank them, and we hope this program will be successful. Um, you never know, but we hope, we're hoping that we can receive grants and find some ways to deal with what everybody knows is our continuing uh, drug uh, problems and issues. Thank you. And uh, one of the main reasons we need to do this, most of these folks already get on the payroll of some government agency, county, state, or somebody. But there's a few that are not. And those few might have some travel expenses, like a trip to uh, Orangeburg or Evansville or someplace for us. And so we have to organize this committee forward to get them in a minute so that if some of those, particularly Judge Browning, we're, we're sending her places. So we want to pay her mileage for government. So we want to recognize this uh, this uh, board, uh for that reason. Like there would be very few, but there's some there that are not with government entities. And that's why we need to recognize them. And, uh, and, and you have all those to record in the minutes, man. I can't believe I have every one of them, but he's going to send some just things inside. What about them? About what? No, that's a whole other, that's the other. Okay. Um, in okay, uh, if you, would y'all like to go ahead and make a motion and, and acknowledge that Justin gave us that board? Okay. Make a motion to acknowledge Justice for a second. Motion by Jason Bullock, second to Joe Barnes. Any discussion or questions for Justin? I think it's a wonderful thing. I attended the first meeting in the a lot of great ideals, a lot of ways to move, and uh, if you're looking at any one expense that's getting out of hand for our county, it's the cost it's a of uh, incarceration and transportation for those people. And if you can save a few, that's a few more than this. That's right. That's right. Uh, the sheriff knows about that transportation part of it, and so if we can get rid of some of that. Okay. Uh, all favor say aye. Aye. Opposed like that. That motion carried. Okay. And we're down to the mansion's coming. Sam from Uh Judge, I just have a motion to make. Uh, this is due because it's in my district and yes. I really want to help them out. Uh, and I want to get done before the next court meeting. Is I make a motion that, uh, that I give a thousand dollars out of my discretionary account the courthouse players and authorize and direct the check. Okay. I can see we'll do that. I don't see there was any, I second it of course. I don't see why there would be any opposition to that. Sam's discretionary money but he wants it on the bill to plan. He wants to be able to write the check now. So I'll all in favor say I uh, Close like that, and you can write them a check. You think you have a thing? Uh, no, I'm good. Just thank you. Jay Thine? No, thank you. Joe? No, thanks. Larry? Uh, just one, one uh, issue here, I suppose. Uh, last year when we sold our Mack truck, it was my intention that we were going to try to sell that on foresale.com to save the $20,000 that they charge for the sale of that. Uh, I know you have potential buyers out there. They wouldn't be paying that kind of price. 
price for the Mack truck. And I, as I said last year, if we could sell it on foresale.com, it could save us $20,000 in the, uh, in, in the uh, auction fee. How much is it to put it on that, Larry? Uh, I'd say it's not, free. But, not, it's not much at all. But it cost, us, it cost us to drive to, I think, Alabama is where they sell. Uh, it also cost us $20,000 to sell the truck. And I, I just thought last year it'd be worth, certainly worth the try, but I noticed we didn't do that this time. So, okay, let's just get that farther. If you would, next year, this coming year, we'll look into it. I mean, try it if it, if it fails and don't come about, then we haven't lost nothing, but we may gain $20,000. Well, if we could put a reserve on it, we could check into it. And we well, you can. Yeah. 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 And we even try it if, if it don't get what we want. Yeah, just a reserve at a break even. <coughs> yeah, cost us. Then we can take it to the option. Yeah. Um, yep. That's a, that's all it is. Yeah, let's, we'll look into that key. I, th I think we actually did last time, but I forgot what the issue was because we did it right after the last sale. And that was one long time ago when we looked into it. So we'll do it again and figure out. We'll report back to the courts the next meeting. Larry? Okay. Justin? How, how, did, we, how did we bear on that on the sale? Was it in the package? Yeah. Yeah, we lost the. Uh, okay. Go ahead. It's in your folder there. Cost of the truck for 12 months. It cost us about $30,000 to operate the vehicle this for one year, which in the past some of them have been a thousand, some have been five, seven, eight, and whatever. But I just, uh, well, I just thought on a good year, I mean, it doesn't really matter. But on a bad year like it was this time, well, it certainly is. I, I really don't like that, of course, because we're still implying that if we owned our own truck, it would cost nothing to operate it. It's, it's saying there'd be no maintenance if we kept them. We kept them. Leave the brand new ones with no maintenance. $30,000. And we're not giving that any weight at all. <coughs> well, I agree, Judge. Uh, when you put 30,000 miles on a, on a uh, truck and it costs you a dollar a mile, then it's, that's, that gets to be pretty pricey. I've been in a truck and I know exactly that. When you, get it, when you have to pay a dollar a mile just for the lease of the truck. Yeah, there's a lot of years. pretty expensive. We had it made money or... Or, yeah, you know, it was really two years. I said it was really no cost at all, five, six thousand, yeah. but thirty-four. That's getting to. Yeah. But what could it hurt to uh, to drive the for sale? If we, if we, if we don't have some kind of contract on this purchase agreement, I know those truck companies are going to jump up and down about it. But if we don't have a written contract that says we've got to, I think it would be a great idea to save most all of that sales cost. We still have to pay the cleanup fee. Uh, anything from the general public for the good of the bottom? Big night. Meeting adjourned. See you back on November 12th.